Hello students, Michael Sanchez here. Thank you so much for watching. Today is Technical Thursday. Uh, every Thursday at 10 o'clock Eastern Standard I'm teaching a class on some more advanced uh, technique um, topics. Uh, but today's actually a really special day because it is Thanksgiving. So I hope you guys all had a great Thanksgiving. Um, ate lots of turkey today. And uh, we're actually going to be also giving away a free electric violin to a lucky winner. So I've been kind of promoting that on my Facebook page quite a bit. Uh, so I actually have the electric violin here that I'm going to be giving away. Uh, some of you guys are watching live right now um, at 11 o'clock. Uh, I'm actually going to do another hangout with uh, some students. And they're going to help me pick the winner. So it should be fun. And I'm going to put it on a uh, page on my superior site. And you guys, uh, if you, I, I emailed everybody just here recently uh, where that page is. So you can kind of check that email and see. Um, but it should be fun. And uh, we're going to start off just by doing the class as regular. And then um, uh, definitely look out for that uh, other Hangout video, which will be posted at 11 o'clock Eastern Standard. Very good. So uh, I figured today would be a great time just to kind of see how you guys are doing. We've done a lot of classes in the last uh, uh, four or five weeks. And I figure. You know, anything you guys have been wondering about or having trouble with, please let me know and I can help, uh, you know, answer your questions. So um, I kind of told you guys before the, the live session began just to think of some questions that you might have. So um, first of all, let's introduce you guys as, as usual. So we have uh, Colleen. Colleen, thank you so much for joining us. How was your Thanksgiving? It was quiet but nice. We had pizza. Pizza? You're supposed to have turkey. Yeah, I know, but... We had pizza. <laughs> it was fun. That, that does sound very delicious. <laughs> it was good. Cool. So, very good. Thank you for joining us. And we also Thank have you. with us Debbie. Uh, Debbie, are you feeling a little bit better? I am feeling better. Thank you. Good. Good. So, you had a little bit of the, the a little bug there for a little bit. So, I'm glad to have you back in the class. Thank you. Uh, we also have with us Eric. Uh, how was your uh, turkey day? I know it wasn't officially there in Canada, but um, did you have a nice uh, nice dinner at least? <laughs> well, uh, nice dinner. Sandwiches? <laughs> that, well, sounds, it, that sounds good. It was a good day, a good day, a good uh, feeling of uh, grace in, in the air, but the, the Thanksgiving was something like a month earlier in Canada, so uh, it wasn't today for us. Very good. And uh, Susan, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, how was your Thanksgiving? Mine was good, thank you. Uh, um, I went to my in-laws and ate a lot of turkey. And we tomorrow we're having turkey soup and then turkey sandwiches. And I'll be all turkeyed up by the weekend's over. But it was it went well, thank you. Very good. Yeah, actually, uh, I have two sets of parents and. Um, my one set of parents were supposed to bring over a ham, and they uh, forgot to bring it. So um, I can go over there anytime this week and get some ham. <laughs> They're mm -hmm. going to have plenty over there. So, um, But, yeah, we had a great time, and uh, my um, wife's parents came into town. They just came from Florida. So they went from, like, the 80-degree weather to the 20-degree weather, which was probably a shock. Um, but, yeah, it was a great time, great day, and the Lions won 40 to 10. So that was great, <laughs> my, uh, my football team. Very good. Well, let's start by just uh, having any of you guys raise your hand and ask a question that you might be having regarding the violin. Um, and if you guys uh, from the audience also want to participate, feel free to text me some questions, and I would be very happy to answer them. Uh, who would like to go first? Debbie, how are things going? Okay. Um, I have a question about my bow. Can I show it to you? Absolutely, please. Um, if you... You can make sure your bow is in the webcam. You're a little bit low. Good. All right. Okay. So is this, is this a carbon fiber bow? Now. Is this a wood bow, or what kind of bow is it? Well, it's got a, a pearl inlay, but I don't know if it's wood. It looks like wood. Okay. Cool. But I have it tight. It's not. It's not new. It's about 17 years old. I have it tightened where the strings are. See how far apart it is from the wood. Is that? Uh -huh. Is that too far? That is too far, Debbie. Um, I was explaining this. I think after the class um, was uh, done last night to some students, as we kind of chat afterwards after the lesson's done, and um, I was mentioning that you want to basically have it to where when you play most aggressively. 
you want to uh, just barely not touch the stick. So if there's a space, like what you just had, between the stick and the hair, um, like, yeah. like this, when you're playing, that's definitely too tight. Do you want it to be more like this? Really close, as close as you can get to the stick without touching it. But when I loosen it up, the hairs get to, it's just, it won't even hardly play on the violin when I loosen it up to that. Okay, so you're saying, um, like, it won't loosen the hairs, it, it kind of just stays in that same spot, you're saying? Well, I loosened it up right now, but I would not be able to play because I can see through the hairs. You mean That's the hairs are kind of dangling a little bit, like they're really loose? Oh, yes, I can see through probably 10 or 15 of them. Okay. Um... It sounds like to me, if that if that's the case, uh, you'd probably need a rehair, uh, especially you said that you've had the bow for a long time. Um, bows need to be rehaired about once every year to two years, depending on how much you practice. Um, if there's a lot of see-through room there, like you're saying, it probably is. You just need more bow hairs on on the uh, on the bow. Um, a lot of times too, you can get issues with. Um, the hair stretching too much and then it's like really hard to kind of get a good camber of the stick um, so what that probably is the that? problem yes what did you call that I was calling it the camber like the stick the, the stick has a camber to it that's what we call that it this Can is you a spell that? camber um, C A M B E R camber, camber. Okay. yep um, so camber basically means that okay I want a nice uh, kind of curved camber where it's uh, going to kind of blend into the strings well and not be stiff. So like this would be a really stiff camber which we don't want. This can cause kind of a stiffy kind of uh, squeaky sound. Um, well maybe that's why I'm so squeaky. Yeah it could, it, it could contribute to it for sure. Um, you know <laughs> there's, there's different factors but... <laughs> um, Let's say it's the bow. <laughs> There you go. Yes, everything that you've done incorrect, we'll put it on the bow. I, I've had students do that. That's totally normal. <laughs> so, so getting um, it rehaired. Yes, and uh, for those of you out there that uh, want to know about that, basically um, any music store that's, that specializes in strings, that's where you'd want to bring your bow to get rehaired. Typically it costs between $40 and $60 to get a bow rehaired. Um, if your bow isn't worth that, you probably just want to get a new one or get a nicer one, whatever. But if your bow is only worth 20 bucks, you don't want to get a rehair. <laughs> um, but if your bow is like, say, $100 or $150 bow, um, you know, like a wood bow, um, then definitely probably consider rehairing it. And uh, there's different quality levels of rehairing. So bring it to a shop that is credible. And uh, um, if you deal with one that deals just with stringed instruments, those are probably going to be the best ones. So if they're dealing with like brass instruments and different things, uh, they're probably not going to be as good. So if you can find a shop that's like just violins, viola, cello, bass, that's probably the best way to go. I know some people live out in the middle of nowhere, um, don't have that. Um, I do. Uh, I have had actually had students ship me their bows and I've rehaired them for them. Um, I don't do it personally, but I have a friend that does it. Uh, that's an option if you guys are interested. But uh, otherwise, yeah, just any shop nearby or whatever um, you can bring it to, hopefully. So. I haven't had it the whole 17 years. I just bought it three months ago, but it's it's a 17-year-old violin, and it came with that bow. Oh, okay, I see. Yeah, if you see through the hair, I mean that that tells me that you it's probably just been around a while and it's been played a lot and it's lost a lot of the hairs. Um, when you when you don't have as much bow hair on the bow, it makes it harder to get a stronger sound. It's kind of more, it's easier to get a wispy sound because you don't have as much hair contacting the strings. Um, so yeah, you want to probably consider that. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, they're, it's like 40 to $60 at any uh, store. But um, yeah, it sounds like that's the problem. Okay. So, Thank you. You're welcome. Colleen, did you have a question? Yes, I did actually. Regarding, um, you said every one to two years you should get your bow rehaired. Does that count the same for carbon fiber bows, or is that mostly wood bows? Yes, it does. Um, it applies the same to any bow. Uh, 
doesn't matter the type of um, material your bow is made out of. Uh, the hairs can, will deteriorate the same depending on your aggressiveness of playing and amount of playing. So uh, it wouldn't make a difference if it's a carbon fiber or a, a wood bow. Uh, a carbon fiber bow is more durable. It's kind of more like an outside bow or doesn't like uh, warp as much, stuff like that. that that's more what um, the material has to do with. But uh, the actual hairs, you know, uh, will be the same from bow to bow. Okay, thank you. You're very welcome. All right, and we have some people watching from the audience, so feel free to uh, ask any questions anytime. Uh, we have uh, with us also Joyce. You weren't here a second ago when I made uh, announcements or um, introductions. How are you doing today? Did you have a good Thanksgiving? Yes. It, it won't let me um, unmute. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> uh, good. So you had a good Thanksgiving? Yes, I really did. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. <laughs> oh, <Very> okay. <laughs> so thank you for joining yes, us. I, we drove all the way to... I don't know. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> You were going to say something, Joyce? Sorry. Oh, I just said I, I drove all the way up to Lake Havasu for Thanksgiving dinner. It was really nice. <laughs> oh, that's nice. Very cool. All right, so does any other student have any questions for me at this time? Uh, Colleen, are you raising your hand? I can't tell. <laughs> okay. Um, so... Uh, just to, if you guys, any time, just raise your hand. Uh, one thing I want to tell you guys that's been really cool lately is any student that's participating in these classes, um, I'm doing it for the half hour time, but the last three or four times I've been doing like extra lessons and extra time afterwards, and it's actually been going really good. Like uh, all the students have been sticking around and we've been chatting and learning. And so any any guys out there that haven't actually participated in the live. Uh, live hangouts yet, I highly encourage you to do so. It's a lot of fun and you can get to meet all the students uh, that are regulars. Um, it's a lot of fun and uh, I, I've actually got some emails here this week about some people interested so highly encourage you to do so and you'll we normally go like a half hour for the live session and then a half hour afterwards for just your specific questions. So, Very good. I actually have a question from the audience. Um, Pernadu, uh, we've done a Skype lesson. He's from India. He's asking a question. Uh, Permadu, you ask, uh, which kind of shoulder rest would you suggest? Yeah, thank you very much for that question. Uh, basically, my favorite shoulder rest that I've recommended for many years is the Kuhn style shoulder rest. I think it has a really nice uh, bend and it kind of adjusts your shoulder really well. Uh, but certainly, a shoulder rest is the, the preference of the student. Uh, I have some students that are comfortable e even with like a cloth uh, or like a foam pad. Um, I have some students that have like the really tall ones and like it really adjusts kind of their neck and shoulder. Uh, I think those are a little bit too much, but I've uh, had some students that really like those. So it's kind of a preference thing. It's definitely not a uh, this one you need to use or is the best. It's kind of how your neck, how long your neck is and uh, just the way that you kind of um, clamp down what, what you feel comfortable with. So, But yeah, the Kuhn style is what I use and I think it's a really good shoulder rest. Uh, for those of you out there that don't know what a shoulder rest is, it's basically the tool that you put on the back of the instrument to help hold it. I don't have one here. Um, but if you don't have a shoulder rest on, uh, basically what's going to happen is the wood uh, in the back of the violin is going to kind of hit up against your collarbone and make it uncomfortable to hold it properly. So you're probably going to end up holding it like this, which is a bad habit, instead of holding it here. Because eventually you want to be able to shift and do vibrato, but if you're relying on holding it here, you're not going to be able to do that. So shoulder rest is very important. So thank you very much for that uh, for that question. Very good. And uh, anybody else? Any questions? Comments? Yes, Eric. It's um, a comment that will maybe turn into a question. I have the impression that uh, if I compare violin to other instruments. It takes more time to uh, to control the, the quality of the sound, and uh, in other instruments that we we can 
start to play with the the musicality. I don't know how to if it's, it's if it, it's a word in English. Uh, the um, the the aspect of the interpretation, uh, changing uh, rhythms, uh, changing the the sounds of, uh, of. I have the feeling that for violin, it's uh, it may take more time to begin to to add a little artistic dimension and. Uh, as for beginners, what are the first things that we can work on that are not too difficult to add a little bit of this uh, musical quality? Maybe dynamics, but uh, maybe something else. I don't know. Sure. Yeah. Uh, you first mentioned something about you know an instrument. Uh, certainly, an instrument does have a lot to do with like the playability and the, the musicality. Uh, it's sometimes hard to get a good sound out of a, a cheaper instrument. Um, but as far as like technically with, with your hands and just um, things on that sort, uh, it's just a matter of you know really getting used to the wrist motion. Uh, the wrist, I think, is the number one thing that really contributes to the musicality of a violinist. I think it really, um, you know, every violinist interprets the wrist differently and how they bow back and forth. Um, I mean, obviously, if you're stiff, uh, you're not going to get a good musical sound. But if you're bending and you're adjusting to you know crossovers uh, different things you're gonna start to get that kind of blend sound it's kinda like a, a singer you hear a singer uh, and if they're just hitting the notes and going bum 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 they're not like going into the pitch you know you hear good singers are ones that kind of adjust and kind of work into notes and kind of uh, like you said dynamics is another thing uh, those are all things that are very much um, uh, very much contributed by the wrist and the index finger as well. So uh, every violinist uh, interprets music differently in different pieces, different parts. And uh, if you guys are interested in learning more about the wrist, I have a lot of videos on my YouTube channel. Uh, just search wrist, um, mm -hmm. youtube.com slash violin tutor pro. And you'll see a lot of stuff there as well as uh, index. If you, if you type in that, you'll see a lot of stuff uh, relating to the index. Uh, which is really important to get that musical sound. Obviously, too, Eric, the vibrato has a lot to do with it. Uh, vibrato contributes immensely to a, mu a musicality of a violinist. So I highly encourage you guys to learn the vibrato technique uh, at some point. Uh, I've been getting, actually getting a lot of questions from students lately on when they should learn vibrato. Uh, I would recommend learning vibrato after about a year to two years' experience. I typically don't, I'm not really excited to introduce it to my private students because it's the most frustrating thing to learn. It's the thing that gets students most frustrated and, uh, you know, it doesn't make them quit, but it just makes them kind of feel like, you know, I can't get this. And it takes about four to five weeks to typically have really good practice. Uh, if you guys are interested in learning the vibrato, uh, go to my YouTube channel and type in the word vibrato. I have a really good tutorial on there. It's like 14 minutes long and it covers everything you need to know about, you know, doing it properly from the beginning. It's really important to do it properly. Uh, if you just try to do too much and kind of just, you know, do whatever you think should be there, it's probably not going to be right and it's not going to sound good in, in the long term. So that's a really good video. I, I highly recommend to you guys uh, and I think it will teach you guys a lot. Um, if, you ha if you've been playing, say, three, four years or longer and you've never even attempted vibrato, I think you definitely should because uh, it really adds to the musicality of the music. And um, you know, all the technique stuff, guys, that we've been working on, you know, like having, you know, the, the proper wrists, the knuckles up, um, you know, everything with the right hand, just everything contributes to having good musicality, getting a good, you know, transition sound, different things on those lines. Uh, if you guys are just starting, like Susan, you, you probably, you know, just trying to get a, a decent sound out of the violin, you know, in whatever you can possibly do. Uh, this would be a little bit more advanced, I would say, in that... Um, it takes time to build that wrist and the index finger. But um, tell me how things are going, Susan. We've been, we had that private lesson uh, this past week, and uh, you know we, we went through a lot of stuff. How's things going with your with your progress? Um, it's slowly but surely. I can get my third finger now much much better than I can my first and my my second and third is better, but the first for some reason I, it just squeaks. Um, the question that I do have for you, maybe you can answer, is is it better to learn the music notes such as, you know, 
the A, B, C, D, E, F, G on the scale and also um, placement like D, uh, open D, one, two, and three along with the notes or is it just easier to learn, you know, one, two, three, like your open fingers and so forth? You follow sure. me? Yes, uh, on my Violin Tutor Pro site, uh, violintutorpro.com, I, I do something that I think helps a lot of students. I have both the notation form and the musical note form right on top of each other. I think that really helps because, uh, you know, a lot of students that just do one or the other, uh, they're going down an incorrect path because uh, if you rely too much on just reading the notes, I, I find students kind of struggle to play fast and kind of get through the music, play efficient. Um, so the notation really helps that. Um, but on the other side, if you just do notation, you eventually want to be able to read music. So you want to have both, which is what my entire Violin Tutor Pro Series 1 covers. Uh, what I would recommend to you, Susan, is um, creating flashcards. Flashcards is really good because uh, you want to learn everything. You want to learn where the note spots are. You want to know that it's a D1. And you also want to know that it's an E. So all those things are good to know when you're playing music. Uh, and if you do, basically just create a flashcard and on the back, you know, have one of those things and then just quiz yourself, go through them in different modes. And eventually, if you just keep doing that, you'll get the hang of it and then you'll come up to a note and know, okay, that's an E, that's a D1, that's, um, you know, everything you need to know about it. So, uh, does that help? Do you have them on, do you have, yes, it does. Do you have them on your superior side or should I just go ahead and make them? I probably should. I don't at this point. I just kind of made them over the years for students, uh, just kind of grabbing some paper and putting some on there. But you can get them at a lot of music stores. If you just go to like Amazon or eBay, you could type in like um, music flashcards. And uh, it would apply to not just okay. violin, but it would apply to any instrument like piano. Um, so yeah, if you just go to uh, any site, really, uh, you'll be able to find them. And some of them are kind of cool. They have different colors on them, and they're just, you know, really easy to follow. And so I think getting flashcards is really good. Okay. Great. Are you guys excited? For this? But I have to admit, I, did, I didn't practice any today, but I will tonight. I just haven't had the chance to, to do much of anything this afternoon. But it's okay. I'll get it's, there tonight. It's the holiday. <laughs> today is a special day, so... Are you guys excited for the electric violin contest? Cool. Yeah, it's uh, it's gonna be fun. I'm gonna be doing that here just in a few minutes. It's gonna be uh, um, picking five random names, and then those five people are gonna win prizes. Um, first place, obviously, is the uh, the electric violin. They see here the fire electric violin. And then I'm also giving away some other prizes as well. So if you guys are interested in finding out the winner, you just go to Facebook. Uh, my latest post uh, you can follow. And then I'm going to actually be doing a hangout here at uh, 11 o'clock with my students that are going to help me uh, pick the winner. So it would be fun. Great. So, yeah, I really encourage you guys just to, um, you know, practice, you know, the concepts that we've worked on this past week. We've gone through a lot of stuff. We've, we went through scales. We went through technique. You know, we learned a lot about, you know, playing the violin. Uh, you know, don't get overwhelmed. Just, you know, really try to structure your practice time. You know, the first 10 minutes work on technique. The next 10 minutes work less on technique, more on the notes, the rhythm stuff. And then the musicality in the last 10 minutes. I think that's a really good lesson for you guys to when you're practicing. Uh, certainly, you don't, you don't want to just uh, not do anything and not be thinking about technique, but you're also, you know, um, need to be technical and you need to be doing the right things to get a good sound. So if you guys uh, have any questions about, you know, what you're doing wrong, uh, you know, if you send me a video, simple video, I'll definitely be able to help you and tell you what you're doing wrong and what you can work on. Anybody out there can do that. If you email me at rivertownviolin at hotmail.com, I'd be more than happy to help you guys out uh, and just give you some technical tips and some advice on what you guys can do better. So uh, and you can also live chat me anytime if you have just a quick question um, on either site, violintutorpro.com or superiorviolence.com. Very good. Uh, do you guys have any other questions? All right. Mm -hmm. So i um, looking forward to doing this electric violin contest, and uh, it should be posted on YouTube for those that weren't able to see it tonight. And maybe a lot of you guys are, um, you know, not available for Thursday, Thursday night, but... Tomorrow, hopefully, you'll be able to see it, and I uh, wish all you guys luck, as it's going to be a random drawing. I have no idea who's going to win as of yet, so...
uh, thank you very much, and we'll see you guys in the next Hangout.